Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, we'll look at um, arithmetic operators in Java um, on the numeric data types that we just learned and how we will be able to write arithmetic expressions as well in Java. Java supports um, five arithmetic operators that we can use in manipulating numeric data which are the addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Correspondingly, these are the symbols that we can use if we want to find the addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, or the remainder of numeric values in Java. And these two columns basically depict the Java expressions for some common algebraic expressions that we are used to. So in Java, arithmetic expressions are always written in straight line form. Um, for example, if we look at the arithmetic expression x is equal to a on b, in Java we have to write it in a straight line form. If we also consider the case where x is equal to y minus 4 divided by 3z plus 2, we will write it in this form in Java where everything is in a straight line form. So in Java, arithmetic expressions are evaluated based on some rules. And these rules are dependent on the type of operators we have in the expression as well as their positions in the expression. So for example, if we have um, in x is equal to the following, how will this be evaluated in Java? So the rule of operator precedence is what is used in evaluating arithmetic expressions in Java. And this rule of operator precedence is used in evaluating arithmetic expressions as follows. Um, first of all, it will look at the operators that okay. So it will first of all consider the operators such as the multiplication, division, and remainder. These are the ones that will be evaluated first from left to right if we have a number of them. So in our example, it will first of all evaluate the multiplication followed by the remainder and division. Once this is done, the next set of operators it will look for are those that are for addition and subtraction. So they would also be evaluated in a similar approach from left to right. So in our case, the next one that will be evaluated will be the addition followed by the subtraction. Once all these operators have been evaluated, then the assignment operator is what will be evaluated to us. So it will evaluate all these and assign the value to x. So if we want our expressions to be evaluated how we want it to be evaluated or the order in which we want it to be evaluated, we need to write it properly by using the parentheses. So when we write our expression using the parentheses, what happens is the expressions that are in the brackets will be evaluated first before the rule of operator precedence. I will illustrate a little bit of this in the practicals. Let's try out some few examples on the Java arithmetic operators and expressions. So I will create a new Java class file. Give it a name, arithmetic operators. When it loads, I need to include my main method. I will use a shortcut. I will paste the following to guide us in our practicals. So we we'll look at additions all the way down to writing arithmetic expressions. Before we look at these operations, let us declare some variables which we will use to test out this operation. So we say we want an integer variable x and we let it be 20, another integer variable y, and let it be 3. 
we declare the double variable one one equals to twenty. Another double variable one two is equals to zero. So we'll start with the additions. If we add two integers, what will we get? So we we'll just print out the results and we say print out x plus y. So in this case, we are adding two integer values. What will we get? So we run it and it returns for us an integer value of 23. If we add the two double values, and we run it, it returns for us a double value. What happens if we decide to add? integer to a double value so we will say x plus any of the double values when we run it returns for us a double value so with the arithmetic operators addition of two integer values will give us an integer value but if we are adding a double to an integer it will return for us a double value. So when we add two or more numeric types, it looks for the one that has a wider range and returns the value in that range for us. That is the reason why when we are adding an integer to a double, it returns a double for us. Same thing applies to the multiplication. So I will copy this and paste and comment this one out. Now I replace the addition with multiplication and when I run it I get similar values. So the multiplication of integers return an integer, the multiplication of two doubles return a double, the multiplication of an integer and a double will return a double. So what happens if we use the subtraction? I'll copy this again, paste, and comment this one out. Now I replace this with subtraction and when I run. I get similar results. Subtraction of integers, return an integer. Double, return a double. And a double from an integer will return a double. So what happens with the division? So I will change this one to just division. And paste the same thing. And comment out this one. And instead of multiplication, I have the division sign. What do we get? I run. We get the following int x on y, which is um, x in this case is 20. When we divide that by 3, which is y, we return 6. With the double division or floating point division, we see it is returning with all the decimal values. Um, if we divide an integer with a double, we return a double for us. So as I explained, it looks for the data type which has the largest range and return the value in that form. So as we can see, with the integer division, it truncates the remaining decimals and just brings us the whole number of the division. So I will delete this one as well and we would find the 
remain less. So let me comment this out and I will paste it. So here we replace this with the remainder for the percentage sign and we take this one out. When we run it, it returns for us to. And that is because we are saying when we divide 20 by 3, what is the remainder? So 20 by 3 will give us 6 whole number, 2 out of 3. So it is bringing us what is remaining, which is the 2. So let's now look at the arithmetic expression part. Let us say we have an integer variable expression is equals to 3 times 6 remainder 5 plus 6 divided by 3 minus 8. And we want to print out this expression. So let me comment this out. And we say print out expression. If we run this, we get a value of minus 3. So as I explained in the slides, we are getting minus 3 because it first of all evaluates 3 multiplied by 6, which is 18, and 18 remainder 5, or mode 5, will give us 3. Now it jumps to 6 divided by 3, which is 2. Now it adds the 3 plus 2, which gives us 5. And when we take 8 out of it, we get minus 3. So if we wanted the addition to be evaluated first, then we would put 5 plus 6 in parenthesis. Now when we run, we expect it to give us a different value. Now we get 6. And that is because it will add 5 to 6, which is 11. And now use the rules in evaluating the rest of the expressions. Again, if we want it to evaluate um, 3 minus 8, we can do that by putting it in parentheses. If we run it, we get a different value now. So if we want our arithmetic expression to be evaluated the way we want it to, then we need to use the parenthesis. So for example, let us say I add another bracket. If I run, I should get something different. So as I explained, the best way to write arithmetic expressions is to use the brackets to decide which one we want to be evaluated. 